Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Woodpecker's Deep Dive. My name is Jeff Ferris. Welcome to the Woodpecker's Model Shop. Today, we are gonna take a closer look at Woodpecker's new Steady Curve Bandsaw Template Following Guide. We'll show you how to set it up, how it does what it does, and why you want one in your shop. All right, let's get started. Now, a lot of folks thought when they saw this tool on our product video and also on the email that we sent out, they thought that uh, we were trying to say that this was going to replace cutting to a template with a router. Nothing could be further from the truth. This isn't about replacing the router. This is about getting ready for the router. Now, I hope you noticed there in that cut that I was making that I was moving a lot faster than I would have been if I were trying to cut to a line. By following the template, I can cut a lot faster and then I'm ready to go to the router. Now, another misconception was that we were trying to replace the guides on your bandsaw. No, uh, you gotta work with the guides on your bandsaw. And let's take a little bit closer look at how those should be set up. So your side guides, whether you have ball bearings or just a straight rub guide on your bandsaw, you want those close but not touching the blade. You want them, uh, what I used to use a lot of times when I set up a bandsaw was I would use a dollar bill as a feeler gauge. And you wanna be just about that far off of your, uh, off of your bearing or your guide block. Uh, then the rear is the same, the rear thrust bearing, we want the blade, when the blade spins, I'll turn that by hand, and you can see that the bearing is not moving. But as soon as I put any pressure backwards, it does. That's the way you want it, so that you have to press in on the blade just a little bit before you start rolling that bearing. Now the steady curve guide should not be touching the blade at all. Uh, we can set this up for different amounts of reveal on the template, I'm gonna talk about that next. Uh, but basically, you want that centered in there front to back, and then the offset is determined by how deep it is sideways. and shouldn't be touching or supporting the blade in any way. Now the offset from the template to the edge of the stock is determined by where we lock down our steady curve. And we can make that just practically nothing up to a full quarter of an inch. So how do you decide? How do you decide how much offset to make? Well, it comes down to several factors. One of them is how experienced you are at the bandsaw and how good your bandsaw is. If your bandsaw tracks a really good line and you have a lot of hours with it, you can probably run that a very, very tight differential between the template and your blade. On the other hand, if you've got a blade that's got some age to it and it tends to walk or drift or, uh, wander around on you and you're not real steady with the bandsaw either one, then you want to back up all the way to the back wall and use the full quarter inch that you have. Um, and now there's going to be lots of variations in between those two. Just a little bit of experimentation and you'll get it figured out how to work it the best. Another factor involved there is the material that you're cutting. Okay, I'm cutting one inch thick hardwood and so I'm gonna probably leave myself a lot of room for error there and use a wider gap. If I were cutting pine, I might run it pretty tight to the outside. One more factor is the complexity of the curves. Now on this cheese board, we've got two real simple curves uh, and they're very broad. So we could run that a little bit tighter if we wanted to. Uh, if you've got something that has some very, very tight curves, now you wanna give yourself a little bit of more room for error and stay to the inside of the guide. So this tool is really simple to set up. There's very little that can go wrong. I do wanna point out a couple of things that you wanna be careful about. The first is the alignment of the arm to the blade. So as we're setting up the depth of cut of our steady curve, we also wanna make sure that we're perpendicular to the blade. We don't wanna be either trailing or leading. We want to make sure that we end up being just about perfectly parallel this way. And that's basically 
just an eyeball alignment. Get centered up on the blade and straight. Which one way to judge that is your bar should be running in a straight line from the frame of the saw to the blade. When you get it where you want it, just throw the switches on the mag switch and it is locked down. Now you may have noticed that there are two mounting positions for the arm. Now let's talk about when you would use one and when you would use the other. Uh, this is a 12 and a half inch bandsaw, uh, 12 and a half at 12 uh, to 14 inch saws. Uh, typically they have two different kinds of tables. Now on this one, this is a table to here and then this part is an extension. And so we're using the longer position on the steady curve because we're mounted out here on the extension. Some saws, like the one in the picture now, don't have that extension piece. They only have a table that's five or six inches either side of the blade. And for those saws, we put a second mounting position in so you can come onto that table. And when you want to use it on a smaller table, it looks like this. So on your larger band saws, 16, 18 inches and bigger, you'll have plenty of room to use the wider position. So another question that we had on social media uh, and on our customer service line several times was, how does it work on thicker stock and how does it work on inside curves? Well, I'm gonna answer both of those at once. We're gonna cut out a leg for a sculptured chair. Using the router template, I have very little sanding left to do. All I need to do is make another back leg and a pair of front legs, and this chair will be ready for the real work, and that's cutting the mortise and tenon. Hey folks, thanks so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this edition of Woodpecker's Deep Dive. If you did, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you know about every one of our videos right when they come out. If you'd like to learn more about the Steady Curve, there's a link for the product video right over here. And down in the description, there's a link that'll take you right to the webpage. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time on Woodpecker's Deep Dive.